All right, my guest today is the founder of His Heart Ministries. She has been on Sid Ross, It's Supernatural. She has her own show on ISN called um, Nuggets of Gold, which is an amazing show if you haven't checked it out yet. She's also a best-selling author and speaker. Please help me welcome my guest today, Donna Rigney. Donna, it's so great to be back with you. I feel like we have such a similar heart for the Lord. And so I love hosting you because you just have such a precious relationship with Jesus. And I'm so grateful you come on and share all you do with us because it encourages us. And even, I mean, when we get off a lot of times, Donna, first of all, I'm like in the glory most of the time. (laughs) Then I'm like, I need to go away with the Lord tonight and make some time specifically tonight where after the kids are to bed, And after all the things are done, I just, I need to be with him. So I'm very excited to have you on. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, I'm so thrilled to be here. And I was so excited when I saw that you were going to be hosting the show. I'm like, oh, I got to get to see Kelsey. (laughs) Because I know know, we we just have a connection. Yeah, the spirit. You know, it is, it, it, it is in the spirit because you know how, you've met someone maybe once or twice, but you just have such a, you know immediately that you love them and you could just talk to them for a long time. And even if it's been a long time since you've talked, when you talk again, it's just like you talked yesterday. Yeah. And I feel yeah. like it's such a God given gift. And I think sometimes we forget that when the Lord brings people into our life like that, it's a, it's a gift from God yes. to know people that are so passionate for him and to encourage one another in the Lord. And that's what you're going to do today for all of us. Even though it's just us, it's a lot of people you encourage, Donna, with your words from God. So if you want to open the show in prayer and then just begin to share what the Lord's been speaking to you about. Oh, thank you. I'd love to. I'd love to. I'm going to release the glory at the beginning of the show and at the end, too. Okay? So we can hear the word (laughs) in the glory and then get more glory. (laughs) I was telling you uh, before we started the show uh, that the glory has intensified. Every single week is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So I want everyone's faith to rise up because God's going to touch you. So, Father, I thank you so much for allowing us the opportunity to be your mouthpiece, to share your heart with your children, Lord. I pray you touch every single one today that you open the eyes of our understanding. But most of all, I pray you ignite a passion in all of our hearts for more of you, for a greater love for you and a desire for you. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I release your glory. Ho, ho, let your glory flood. Ho, every single one, fill their homes. Ho, ho, in their neighborhoods, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Mm, amen. Ah, now the fire's on me. <laughs> <laughs> perfect way to open the show. It's a perfect way to open the show. So yeah. Yeah. you that have quite a few beautiful encounters you're going to share with us today. Yeah. Um, yeah. So why, I'm just going to kind of give it to you and you just go mm-hmm. ahead and share all the things. All right. Well, what I feel that the time we're in right now I feel that it's the time where God is performing the words that he's spoken through his prophets over the last few years. Uh, We've had a lot of promises that God's made us. And all of a sudden, it's like a suddenly hour. And he told us a suddenly hour was going to come. But we were going to see those prophetic words be performed. And not only the words that he spoke way back when, But I'm seeing also the words that he's giving us now. And I'm not talking the personal words we give for people because I've been seeing him perform those words right along. But the the words for the nation and for the world, I'm seeing him perform them right away. He gives them and then the next day, boom. (laughs) So it's an exciting hour we're in right now. It's a good hour. You, You just had an example of that. Um, recently where you were telling me like you had a word where the Lord showed you something. And then within the next day, you found out like, oh, that's what you were showing me. And it was the very next day. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I that's saw, fast. I, yeah, I saw in the spirit uh, while we were having our prayer meeting 
uh, well, our, our glory gathering, oh, a, a needle and a syringe. And so we were praying against assassination. I felt more for Biden than for mm. Trump, the needle. Okay. Oh, right. God. but I did feel it was an assassination attempt going to come. We also, of course, have been praying for the last few years faithfully against the assassination of Donald Trump. And so we prayed against that. And um, right after that happened, we saw what happened, the assassination attempt against Donald Trump. But then the next day, how Joe Biden got sick with COVID. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, my goodness. oh, my goodness. So I feel like uh, for all of us as intercessors, because I think mo a lot of the people that watch Elijah's streams have a heart for intercession and prayer, that we need to pray against um, any further assassination attempts against Donald Trump, who, uh, yes. especially using an injection, okay? Who, a yes. shot, you know? Who, mm -hmm. uh, somebody getting close to him. But I, I did, when that happened, I'm like, oh my wow. goodness. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So God is, he's just speaking. He also yes. told me uh, Sunday night that all the um, decisions that the deep state and the Democrats that they're going to be making, and I saw it like mm -hmm. step by step by step, that each one was going to be worse for them than the decision before it. That, that it was wow. Going to be, yeah. That, that, that it was going to backfire on them. It was going to be bad. Every decision that they make. And we're seeing them making a lot of decisions. Yes. <laughs> and not saying they're going to, it's going to backfire. They're going to be bad. They're going to really come into a time of great chaos and confusion. Yep. We're, so, we're seeing the start of that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it just, and that was Sunday night. And since then, many things have happened. It's only Tuesday and we're seeing so many things every day. More and more. I things. know. Yes. Everybody. God is fulfilling the prophetic word. I mean, some some people have prophesied these things five plus years ago. Right. Right. And people have been, oh, it's never happened. And then it's like, but when it does happen, you're like, God showed me this. Like, yes. you know, it's, we shouldn't be so surprised, you know, that God's fulfilling them. But at the same time, you, I think more than surprised, you're excited. Excited. Like, <laughs> I read that word. So yes, it's very, very. <laughs> What's next? Yes. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start sharing some of the things that uh, I sent in with notes, okay? Um, uh, the Lord has shown me over the past few years that he's going to be rescuing us. And what? And he would call it, he would say, I'm going to be sending a grand rescue event is coming. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> I'm like, cool. I wonder what this is going to be like. And he said he was going to do it in such a way that everyone was going to see it. And oh, and he and he paralleled it to when he rescued uh, the people of Israel out of Egypt. That yes. oh, they had prayed and prayed and cried out, and God sent Moses there, and then eventually Moses led the whole nation out of captivity across, you know, part of the Red Sea for everybody to see, <laughs> and yes. led them across. And here comes Pharaoh and the army that to come and capture them and kill them, whatever they were going to do to them. And Moses extends his rod over the, the Red Sea and they all drowned and the enemies are destroyed. You know, this happened in one day. Boom. Yes. God did this. He did it suddenly and he did it for all to see. And he said, this is what's coming. This is what he's been telling me. And I know he's been telling other prophets the same thing, that this is what's coming. I'm going to, there's going to be a grand rescue event that everybody's going to see. Okay. Oh. And so uh, at the debate, this okay. guy started this grand rescue event where we, everybody's eyes were open at the, really, I call it the debate debacle, where <laughs> Biden was seen for who he was at the debate. Oh, and people were like, who is really running the country? There is yes. no way this man can be running the country. He can't even That's form right. a sentence. And, yes. Yeah. And so... <laughs> And so, and Trump outshone him and people could see this man really is a good leader. Yes, he is. And so this was, I felt like God was saying, this is the beginning of this grand rescue event that I told you was coming. And then after that, earlier that week, on the Monday, 
God had spoken to me. Oh, ha, I'm skipping over my notes. He, on the Monday before the debate, he, the Lord spoke to me and said to me, victory after victory after victory, he said three times, is coming to your land. Yes, Lord. So was, yes. Before the debate on the Monday, and the debate I think was on the Thursday. And then during the week, the Supreme Court made a couple of rulings that really were for Donald Trump in, in some cases they had, and also for the January 6th people. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> these, these are awesome. And then the debate was another great victory. Yes, then, it was. Yeah, yes. Then after that, Donald Trump does it goes to Pennsylvania and does the rally and there's an mm -hmm. assassination attempt against him. Another victory. So God is, this is what he's doing in this hour. He's saying victory after victory after victory. Now we just saw the, the today, this afternoon, the um, person that was in charge of the Secret Service resigned. Yes. One victory after another, after another. Biden stepped down, another. And when yes. we're going to keep seeing this, we don't need to be in fear of what, the enemy is going to plan as a counterattack because mm -hmm. God's saying victory after victory after victory is coming. And he, oh, yeah. <laughs> and he said to me that, uh, he said, remember when Donald Trump said that you, so, you're you going to be winning so much. And this is, I think, when he was running in 2016. We're going to win so much that people are going to say, I'm sick of winning. I'm sick of winning. <laughs> <laughs> and when God said to me, no, you're not going to get sick of winning. He said, remember when he said that you are going to win. It's going to be victory after victory, but you're not going to get sick of it. You're going to be rejoicing out in the street. Yes. And you're going to yes, be celebrating. So thankful. Yeah, we're gonna be, because we've been through so much. Okay, yes. so now I'm going to get to my notes. But that's kind of <laughs> sums up a few things. Okay. Yes. We're, I'm just excited because... <sighs> Our God is so powerful and so mighty and so faithful and so good. He and is. He doesn't go back on his word. He promised he us, right. I'm going to rescue you. Guess what? He's not going to disappoint us. He's going to rescue us. And he's doing it in a wonderful, wonderful way. Because I think that we've been through so much that we're sitting back and like, oh, this feels good. You know, I don't dread looking at the news right now. <laughs> this, yes. This good. Yes. I see some good reports. Okay. Yes, we are. All right. Uh, oh, all right. I'm going to point two. Okay. Okay. All right. And I just, I pretty much covered uh, most of that. Um, and this is what the Lord said to me after the debate. Okay. Uh, this was on the Friday morning. And he said, I was sitting alone with him in my prayer time. I, I make sure every single day, religiously, faithfully, that I sit time aside and I sit with the Lord for hours. <laughs> oh, that's I get frustrated if it's only a short time. It has to be hours because I just want to just, once his presence comes, I don't want to leave. <laughs> yes. So yeah. I know the feeling. Yeah. It's the best thing in the world. There is nothing better. If you could bottle it up and sell it, you'd be a trillionaire. Like it's, <laughs> it's wonderful. So but we, you know, he doesn't make it easy. So, you know, God could do that. He could bottle it, you know. But, <laughs> right. But he wants us to be devoted to him, where we will set time aside and make a little sacrifice to spend time with him and show him that we do love him. And so yes. that's why it costs us a little something. Like Catherine Kuhlman says, what was the price of the anointing? She said, everything. <laughs> it costs yeah. everything. Yeah. Yes. So there is a price to pay. But anyway, this is, I'll get back to the word. This is what, um, oh, oh dear, <laughs> the anointing got me so strong. He said, fresh fire will fall from heaven on the world. Last night, and he's talking about the debate, oh, was just the beginning of what we have planned. Victory after victory. Oh, yes, many men will join this movement to restore your nation back to me and to greatness. Oh, so... <laughs> People's eyes get opened up and they're going to join in and say, wait a minute, I'm getting out of the camp, this camp over here and getting in God's camp. He said, eyes are no longer blind 
but many are dumbfounded that they allow themselves to be duped into believing in a false reality. Angry at those who deceive them, disgusted that they were tricked, and furious at the suffering they endured and continue to endure because of the tricksters they follow is the condition of many who had their eyes opened and saw the truth exposed before their eyes. Yep. Backfired upon, so, and God's been telling us this, through a lot of the prophets, that there was going to be a boomerang, the things that the enemy launched out were going to come back upon them. Okay, he said backfired upon are those who led this sham, the media, huh? all the politicians who were saying Biden's fine, Biden's okay, he's a great president, he's he's doing a wonderful job with the economy. Yeah, right. (laughs) We're like, what? (laughs) But all these lies were going forth and they kept promoting that. So people, eyes got opened. So he said, backfired upon are are those who led this sham, exposed for all to see their shame and never to be believed or followed or voted for. Will these be who orchestrated the demise of your nation and its wealth? Wow. Oh, uh, Oh, they will be made to pay. Payback is coming to all involved in this disastrous deception that was perpetrated against the people of your nation. This land will be great again and will do my bidding. Oh, yes. I'm just like excited because I'm seeing God fulfill it. He's saying it, but he's doing it at the same time that he's saying it. Even when um, Biden stepped down and he wrote that letter that said mm-hmm. that he was going to uh, not be part of the race for the presidency. What I felt the Holy Spirit gave me a download that they knew that they couldn't cheat enough to win with Biden at the helm. And so they, they, whatever they did to convince him or whatever, to get him to drop out of the race, oh, because they know they, they, there's too many people now that are not going to vote for them, but are gonna vote for Trump and vote for conservative values. It's not really Trump they're voting for. People are really voting for conservative values and to restore our nation back to what it's supposed to be. Yes, and many, that's not a surprise to us either because many people have been saying at the end, he's not going to finish at the end and he's not going to get another term. We've heard that, prophets have been saying that on Elijah's dreams for over four years now. So yeah. it's like, and then he wouldn't. Yeah. So we're going to see what's going to happen in the next few weeks or so. <laughs> More is coming. It's yeah. like almost every day something's happening. I know. Yes. It's going to be so good. Oh, ha. And then the Lord said, your nation will be restored and will shine like a light for the benefit of the world. Mm. Yes. World changers will get into position and will will impact this world through my grace. In all seven mountains, a great shift in leadership will bring about transformation that will restore the destiny of this once great nation. For the sake of the world and my kingdom, in an answer to the prayers of the righteous, this will be done quickly. Ho ha! Victory is at hand. And that's what we're seeing. It's that's happening fast. You know, we suffered for a long time, but now all of a sudden this grand rescue event has been launched and one thing after another quickly is happening. Yeah. The enemy's like, we've, ah. seen, we've seen God do that all throughout his word, like time and time again. You see, you use the example of the Exodus. It was like when it was time, when it was God's time, it was God's time. Right. And then there is no stopping God's time. But you right. get to sit and watch God work and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so the Lord. I mean, anyone who sees what happened with the assassination attempt against Trump, yeah. even secular people who, who secular news stations who never talk about God are saying, well, that must have been divine intervention. Right. Like, no. Even they're saying everyone, you know, you can't deny that it's not the Lord moving. And it's That's so exciting. When I launched this event, 
everyone's going to know it was me. Yes. When, when we saw Donald Trump go down in the bullet, we, uh, we, you, anyone that was watching the rally, you didn't know if he, he got killed. Then he stands up, raises his arm, <laughs> fight, fight, fight. Yes. <laughs> God, you, you knew. Oh my goodness. God yes. rescued him. Yes. Yeah. He's wonderful. I know. <laughs> I, we're praising God for all this. It's so good. He said, greater than the victory that this world enjoyed after World War II, will the victory be at the end of this war for the soul of your nation? Oh, wow. remember how they were dancing in the streets when World War II was over? Yes, there was some famous pictures of that, too. God said, it's going to be greater. And back in 2019, I've spoken about this a number of times. It was so impacting to me. The Lord first had shown me a, a vision where I saw the world and the Father's hand was on the world. And he said to me, when my hand rests on the world, everything is as it's supposed to be. He said, but when my hand lifts off even a little bit, chaos rules and reigns who oh, and after the, that, this was before covid this was in the summer then in the fall he spoke to me again and he said a great war is coming to your land one like you have never seen before now this is before the covid before the election wow. being stolen before wow. all the things that happened he, he said a great war is come now i'm like am i hearing god because we had the Civil War, and that was so bad. So many died from the United States. How can we have something worse than that happen? And so he said to me, daughter, mobilize the troops. Mobile, and he said it again, mobilize the troops, daughter. Oh, now again, he's talking about this war. We're coming to the end of it. We've been in this war since yes. the end of 2019, the beginning of 2020. This battle started raging with COVID and then one thing after another, after another, we've been in a battle. Yep. And we're almost out of it. Praise we the Lord. We made it. <laughs> we're coming out winners. <laughs> he, said, we're gonna, he said, I'm going to repeat that again. Greater than the victory that this world enjoyed after World War II, will the victory be at the end of this war for the soul of your nation? So this war has been for the soul of our nation. Oh, and I remember many years ago um, that one of the great prophets, um, I think it was uh, Hagen that had uh, got, had this vision that he, he saw the arm of communism rising up out of the ocean beside the United States. And he knew that God was saying that communism was going to come and take over the United States. And he said, God, what can we do? What can we do, God? <clears throat> and then he saw this huge ball of fire come from heaven and come to the earth. And it was the glory of God being released on the earth. Oh. <clears throat> glory is the answer oh, to this. Yes. And what, what have we been battling? Communism trying to take over our nation. Okay. <clears throat> and then he said, I am positioning my chosen ones to lead in this hour. Both young and old will take their positions because all are needed to get back all that was stolen and lead this nation back on the path of its destiny. I will combine the strength, vigor, and enthusiasm of the young with the resolve, wisdom, and tenacity of the aged to raise up a force that will take this world back for me. So God's saying, I'm gonna assemble my army in this hour, you know? And what, what are we gonna be doing? What, how are we gonna be fighting? Worshiping, huh? loving one another, praying, of course, prophesying, declaring the word of God, serving one another, helping. This is, God's going to do it wonderfully with love. You see? Yes. He says, I am positioning, oh, um, my chosen ones to lead in this hour. Okay. He said, this is the time of the grand unveiling. And that was another prophetic word that he had given me and other prophets that we were going to have this unveiling, this stripping the veil of deception off people's eyes that people are going to start seeing the truth. Okay. Yes. So he said, this is the time of the grand unveiling. And we saw it at the debate for sure. But one thing yes. after another since then, he said, this is the time of the grand unveiling that I promised through my prophets was coming. 
Eyes are being opened. The veil of deception is being ripped off my children's blinded eyes and truth is being revealed while lies are being exposed. This is yes. happening to individuals and to nations. Oh, so we're, we're I'm just, I, <sighs> it's like you've been praying, 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 praying for years. Now all of a sudden we're seeing the answers to those prayers. You know, it's this, there's a scripture in the book of Revelation. It talks about how the prayers of the saints are go up and they are all gathered in a bowl in heaven. And when the bowl gets filled with the prayers of the saints, then the bowl is released and it's poured out all over the world. <laughs> That's where we're at right now. You know? Yes. It's beautiful. And it's not just, you know, it's in every facet of our lives where God said that veil or, you know, that's being torn away, the the revealing. You know, it's not just, oh, well, what's happening in the world, but it's, I think it's in re relationships and people on here can testify. I mean, even in my own life, you know, it's things that I'm, I'm like, how did I not see that before? <laughs> it's like all of a sudden, and it has to be the Lord by the Holy Spirit, because it has to be the Holy Spirit doing that for us, because we just don't all of a sudden wake up and like the, it's revealed. Well, <laughs> I don't. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, this doing the things I'm declaring that he's saying nationally, it's always, it always, Okay, there we go. I lost you. Oh, okay. I lost you for a second. I wasn't sure if it was me or you. <laughs> yeah, the whole screen. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we're back. But what God does nationally, it, it comes personally on our lives too. So what he's saying, I'm opening the eyes of the people all over the nation, but it's also in our personal lives that this is yes. happening. That we're yes. starting to see where we've been deceived or tricked in different areas. It might be minor, but it impacts our lives. Now I'm going to go to point number three, okay? And this is where the Lord spoke to me about uh, the assassination attempt on Donald Trump, okay? So we all know what happened that on uh, July 13th at 6.11 p.m., uh, the assassin, and who knows exactly what really went on? Because I think that, you know, it's going to take time for that to be exposed. But yes. this is, he was shot at and it went through his ear, missed him miss killing him. Um, and then he stood up and after he was, he went down to the ground, he raised his arm up and was shouting, uh, fight, fight, fight. And the thing that really impacted me was how he kept saying, I want my shoes, get me my shoes. <laughs> I was like, who would think of that? <laughs> right. So Why the following night we're at our prayer gathering, okay, at the glory gathering. And so we were praying for him. We, we, we really devoted a lot of time praying for Donald Trump and his family and everything and for the nation. And uh, the Lord was showing me how that Donald Trump was fulfilling Ephesians 6, 10 through 11, uh, 18, that um, he was covered in the armor of God and that uh, he was asking for shoes because it would prophetically what he was doing was declaring he was ready to complete his assignment to make America great again. Because that scripture was, and with this is from Ephesians 6 15, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Oh, so he was saying, You're not stopping me, <laughs> give me my shoes. I'm going to yes. complete the assignment that God has given me. Oh. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. And at the time, I didn't know that he was shot at 6 11, that that was when I didn't know that. So I, I was completely, I just, wow. I just saw that this is what had happened. And then afterwards, I found out he was shot at 6 11. And then how that parallel with Ephesians 6. 10 through 18, oh. 6, 11. That's so God. I know That's it. such a oh. guy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. Yes, yes. And he is going to finish the assignment. And, you know, we see, we see him persevering time and time again. And, you know, that's a supernatural 
assignment and strength too, yeah. you know, because people can't bear that in their own strength mm -hmm. and in their, all the things that have happened. I mean, the Lord has been with him and God is with the church and the church is praying and has been praying. Like you said, you, your own glory gatherings, you guys have been praying against the assassination for years. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and we, and now we're watching God perform those prayers. So, yes. wonderfully. you know, you figure Ephesians tells us Ephesians six, put on the full armor of God, huh? Put the yeah. helmet of salvation on the breast. Yes plate of righteousness, huh? the belt of truth, the shield of faith. Oh, uh, uh, and here's, and he's got the sword of the spirit, the word of God, and those shoes too. And, and God's saying, you watched a man covered with my armor and my protection not get taken out. And that, so we all need the armor of God. We Amen. all need it. All right. But this, that was, I mean, God is just speaking volumes right now. <laughs> is that powerful? Yes. I know. It's so powerful. So I good, know. Donna. I know. So now, oh, oh this one, this, um, the Lord uh, brought me to Second Chronicles chapter 20. Uh, this was just hours before Trump was shot. Okay. This was on the same day, but it was Saturday morning. Okay. <laughs> and he was talking to me about Donald Trump. Again, he's been talking to me about Donald Trump almost every day, different things he's saying. And he wow. showed me in this scripture how these men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir came to attack Judah after God had speared them when uh, he sent Joshua in to take the promised land. He told them to not fight against those three, leave them and let them be. And they did not attack them. And so now these this uh, these armies are coming to attack Jehoshaphat and Judah. And Jehoshaphat says to God, see how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. So he's like, God, look at the lack of gratitude they have for you saving them. <laughs> now they're coming to attack us and take our land and destroy us. When I'm so when I'm reading this, father begins to show me that Jehoshaphat was a picture of Donald Trump. All right. Oh, wow. He said that he only did good to those who attacked him. Mm. Oh, those who were his political enemies before he got into his term when he served 2016, we mm -hmm. know they did a lot of illegal things, a lot of things. Clinton with her laptop, you know, with bleach bit and all that stuff. Yes. And so many things that they did, how they spied on him, how they lied about him, all the things that happened. He could have had them justly persecuted. He could have pursued them. He didn't. He didn't. Yep. And so that was, God was showing me we're in the same hour as wow. when Jehoshaphat had these three armies coming against him, that he had, God had protected, did not give them what they deserved, and now they're coming against him. And we've watched these very people that he could have justly, even they could have been imp imprisoned. Yep. Now they are attacking him ruthlessly yep. and relentlessly. Oh, and so he explained to me, oh, that um, they paid him with vicious, slanderous, false accusations and relentless attacks. And now, like Jehoshaphat's enemies, God's going to cause them to be destroyed. Wow. So that's what happened. Okay. Oh, wow. The three armies attacked one another, and not one was left alive. Wow. Oh. And, we, and what we're doing right now, we're watching the Democrats and the deep state fight against one another over Biden's failing bid for the presidency and his failed presidency right now. Yes. Plus, yes. Judah, at the end of it, now, Jehoshaphat, the army, he, he gathers his people. They pray. They fast. They seek God. The prophets declare, you're not going to have to fight this battle. God's saying the battle's his. He's going to take care of it. He's going to give you victory. Oh, ha. so they put the worshipers in front of the, of the battle, go to 
to the top of the hill, look down, and in the valley are the three armies, all dead. They had fought against one another, totally destroyed one another. Not one was alive. And the, so then wow. Jehoshaphat's army, Judah, went down, took them three days to gather all the plunder. There's the wealth of the wicked being given to the just. Whoa. Paralleling. Is this huge? God was paralleling. Yes. This is the hour you're living in. Those wow. that I had mercy on through Trump did not bring them to court where they should have been. Oh, mm -hmm. Attacked him relentlessly, ruthlessly, viciously. Oh, like these three armies coming against Jehoshaphat, they ended up fighting one another and destroyed one another. And then all the wealth was given to Judah. Wow. And you see them do that because there is no, within evil and wickedness, there's no loyalty no. Or, or doing some what's right. It's right. always what's best for me and stepping on everyone else. So to see them turn on each other, you know, it's like, well, yeah, because that's out of the heart, you know, yeah. that's what happens. Yeah. So this is I, prophetically, if we can look at it and say, Look what God is doing. Yeah. And oh, we absolutely. Hear, have heard Nasara, just that we've heard that so many people talking about that there's going to be a transfer of wealth. The Lord has spoken that to me many times that the wealth of the wicked is going to be given to the just. That's coming. We're in the time now where they're fighting one another. But wow. we're going to be looking down and seeing none of them left and all the wealth given over. Is this good? Wow. I know. It's it's amazing because I've heard this. I've heard that too. Many people have talked about the wealth transfer. And I always, my I'm always like, I wonder how it's gonna, you know, know. like how it's gonna eventually work itself out. But I think everyone prophesies in part, and then when you see God fulfill it in the way he fulfills it, you're always like, Oh, that's how it's gonna happen, you know. So <laughs> it's very exciting. Yeah, I know. So I, I, I'm I'm just like, these are good days. These yes. are good days. We've suffered much. <laughs> and so this is what he said to me. After he, he's giving me this download, showing this to me, then he spoke and he said, watch as I do punish those who mistreated my chosen ones. And he really emphasized my chosen ones. Okay. Whatsoever they did to the least of my brethren, they did to me. So when they were attacking Trump, when they were attacking uh, Stone, Roger Stone, but the different ones that have gotten attacked, okay? So we, we watched so many that were innocent, even put yes. in, jail, in prison, okay? Oh, yes. the January 6th people. I know. All right? God's seeing all this. What about all the innocent children that have been trafficked? So many yes. thousands of children have gone missing. Oh, God's saying, whatsoever they did to the least of my brethren, they did it to me. When I look from heaven, I see my son being abused again and again by those he served through my children. So Jesus is serving through his through God's people. Yes. Through Donald Trump, God, God's serving. Jesus is serving us. Oh, uh, through uh, di different godly leaders, di different people. And God's saying, when they were attacking them, I saw them as attacking my son. Wow. He said, this will stop. Those who refuse to repent, like Peter did when he repented, when he denied my son, will be held accountable and lose everything. Oh. 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 Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So he, he showed me that. Do we pray for is yeah. that like set? So when a word comes like that, because I've heard so many different things, Donna, like if a word like that comes, is it okay? Well, it's set. That's like a set word. Do you then say, well, I'm, I would pray that there would be mercy or how do you handle that as an intercessor when a word like that comes to you? Um, I pray for them to repent. Okay. This is what God has shown me. Because there's another word further down that he spoke to me about this, that this is the hour where he said, enough, I've had enough. And he told me, he brought me to the scripture, even if uh, Job, Daniel, and Noah were standing here, 
were there. I wouldn't, I would just spare them and no one else. Oh. And so he told me, he said, don't waste your breath praying for them, but wow. pray for them when my judgment falls on them to repent, pray for their yes. souls that they repent. Okay. So that's, that's what I've been doing is praying for each and every one. Like he said, pray, you know, he said, unless they repent like Peter did. Yeah. So pray that yeah. they, re I, that's what I'm praying. God, let them repent like Peter. He wept. It said he went out and he wept bitterly. He looked at Jesus who he just got to, through denying three times. So rooster crowed and he, oh, he was convicted to his heart because Jesus told him, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. He said, I'll die. I won't do that. <laughs> he did. <laughs> and so then he wept bitterly. And this is what God wants to see. They will still suffer for what they've done, but he's after their souls that they repent. Yes. Okay. Because yes. he's given them so many opportunities to repent, to stop what they've been doing, to stop the sexual trafficking of the children. Mm -hmm. stop mm -hmm. the yep. And they haven't stopped. Those that have repented, that's a different story. But those right. that have refused to repent, yeah, this is what he's been saying to me. Yeah. Okay. And even like, it? yes. And I'm thinking even before we're saved and we don't repent because we're not saved, we don't know, you know, we don't understand, we don't have the conviction uh, there of the Holy Spirit. And then let's say you commit a crime and before you're saved and then you become saved right before you go, you know, to court. Yeah. Well, just because you repented of the crime and the, the you're still going to have the weight of what you did still right. come. The judge is still going to judge you right. on the earth, even though you repented. So I think of it that way. There's still, you know, you still have to pay for what you've done, but you've right. been spiritually washed clean. Now you don't have that guilt over you and you don't do it again. You've been free from that. But right. Um, I'm thinking of like that, where they'll still pay for the consequences, but that their souls would be washed clean is what our prayer needs to be. Right. They would right. come to Christ. Okay. Right. Yeah, definitely. Because God's will is that all will be saved. Yes. Amen. You know, so no, I know that uh, he's had it. This is God right now. Like he's had it with this, with the injustice. Right. The fulfillment of time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what he showed me through this teaching is just a couple of things. He's, he's for us, how do we take this teaching that he's saying about Donald Trump and about the nation? And now how do we apply second Chronicles 20 to our lives? Okay. He said, don't mistreat those that he's used to bless us. Yeah. When we didn't deserve it, deserve to be blessed or to be forgiven. Don't, don't, and it, he's, he was saying, like, think of the prodigal son. He comes back to this, the arms of his father. He's sinned. You know, he took his wealth, went and squandered it. Then he's sorry. Oh, look at him. My life is a mess. I'm going home to my father. I'm going to ask him to let me work for him. Okay. So he runs into his father's arms and his father embraces him, puts the ring and the robe on him, restores him completely. Well, supposing right after that, he's disloyal to his father. He mistreats his father. That's that's the parable that God's saying. When mm -hmm. you've been forgiven by somebody, when you've been blessed by somebody, when you really didn't deserve it, remember it, okay? Don't mistreat them down the road, okay? And that's what uh, these three armies were doing, and that's what all these people have been doing to Trump, okay? Yes. He said, uh, when blessings come, be grateful. Stay humble. Be loyal to those who helped us, all right? That's for us to take in our personal lives. And then number three, don't align with the wicked or those who hate the ones that God used to bless us. So the three armies aligned together against, all right, um, Jehoshaphat and Judah. And so he's saying, don't align with other people that hate someone that has blessed you. All right, stay loyal. And then um, number four, when we are attacked, don't fear, have faith in God, surrender all, trust him to save us. This is what the prophets were saying to Jehoshaphat and the army. Okay. Don't be afraid. Trust God. Give it to him. He's going to take care of it. Okay. <laughs> Leave the battle to him. All right. Don't be discouraged. Stand firm. Worship God before the victory. So this yes. is in our personal lives. We all go through trials. Okay. 
yes. and worship God before the victory and during the attack, have faith in God and in his prophets. Okay. So, mm -hmm. and then the last one, which was, you just asked this, pray for those who attack us to repent like Peter did when he denied Jesus and pray for them to be forgiven and restored. And mm -hmm. he got his destiny back. Peter got his destiny back. His yes, destiny was the early church. And so pray that they will get their destiny back. All right. For people to repent. Cool. Yes. Let's... Peter thought his destiny was a fisherman. Yeah. God changed that. <laughs> he said, you're a fisher of men. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. He, you know, God is so faithful and so good. We, when we sin, he loves to forgive us. He loves to forgive. And yes, he loves he to restore us. And the enemy yes. loves to tell us, the accuser of the brethren, that look what you did. God will never use you. No. And, I mean, right. we, someone might have been a drug addict and terrible, terrible crimes and whatnot. Repent. They're sorry. God forgives them. And then he puts a mantle on them and uses them to go minister to other drug addicts and get them set free. So the very area that we fall, a lot of times God will use us to, and put that mantle on us. Yes. It's like we did with Peter and restore us. Okay. Yes. Good. Amen. So Amen. good. All right. Now, um, this is another time that the Lord spoke to me on July 14th um, about um, Donald Trump, about the assassination attempt. He said, rejoice in the God who delivers, saves, and surrounds you with my strong protection. So he's saying he did that for Donald Trump, but he does it for us too. Yes. Okay. Amen. He delivers, he saves, huh? And he surrounds us with his, his protection. I am a wall of fire that shields you from all the attacks of the enemy. Mm -hmm. You all watched my grand rescue event as I shielded your true and honorable president, Donald Trump, escape certain death. Oh, ha! my hand was covering him and will continue to cover him and his. Cool. Yes. He said, all yes. I, yeah, all I promise through my prophets, I am performing. Many will believe in me and in my ways. Just like you said, Kelsey, you said people are watching the news and they're saying this was divine intervention. And people that aren't even believers are saying, God did this. And God yes. says, many are going to come to believe because they're going to see my grand rescue event and know it was me. Yes. And it's so, because it's exactly what you're saying. Like it's a grand rescue event and it's, it's rescuing people to come to Christ. I mean, that is the ultimate thing, but he can yes. use whatever he needs to use. I've seen videos. I'm sure you've seen them too, Donna, where it was like showing if he wouldn't have turned his head at the exact moment, like where the bullet would have went. And it was just like the, and they did it in slow motion. It was like the I mean, God's sovereignty and his protection and, and his plans are like that he would turn at that time. I mean, it is, it is, um, it's a miracle. It's amazing oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. what God has done. And you can't deny that and say, oh no, it was just luck. No, it's not just luck. Mm -hmm. And, and I think it is a, it is a divine rescue and it's such a, a time for us to as believers even if bringing up the conversation with unbelievers like what a hey what do you think about how that bullet you know hit his ear you know don't you think that was god even opening up that to preach the gospel is like it's a great opener to start to preach the gospel absolutely and if god if god, what god is saying what i did for him i want to do for you if we belong to him and we're his, this is what he, I preached on this Sunday night. If we will surrender our entire life to him, everything in our life and give it totally to him. He says, then I can bless you to the degree I want to bless you and protect you. But if we keep certain areas that we, you know, God can have this. <laughs> I'm going to worry about this. I'll take care of this. This is my issue or whatever. And, or we live in a certain way in a certain area in our life that, you know, it's unpleasing to God, then he can't bless every area of our lives and protect us. And he's saying, surrender your whole life to me and you will see me do what you saw me do to for this man, how I protected him. Cool. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah.
All right. So now, then he continued to speak to me on Tuesday. Oh, and he said this again about Donald Trump. He said, don't worry about Donald Trump. My hand is on him and on his destiny. Because, you know, all of us are thinking, gee whiz, they tried to kill him once. It's a thought. Oh, yeah. 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 And you know how wicked the enemy is. So he's he's not saying don't pray for him. He's saying okay. don't do it from a stance of worry. Yes. Do it from a stance of faith, knowing how mighty your God is and how he's a shield and it'll protect him. And the enemy's not going to take him down. Okay. <laughs> yes. So he's saying, don't worry about him. My hand is on him and on his destiny. He will restore this nation to greatness and to my son. Oh, ha. yes. Jesus will rule as King and Lord over the United States of America. By my hand, it will be done. Oh, yes. My hand resting on an imperfect man will bring forth great victory. God uses people. He uses imperfect people. Yes, he, he does. Them. They got an assignment. They got, yep. they got whatever characteristics they need to perform ha, what he, God's given them to do. He said, it's my hand rests on a perfect man and he's going to accomplish his destiny. Yes. And you will see one good thing after another unfold. <laughs> yeah. We started that. We started that. <laughs> My children will benefit from my blessings that I pour out on this man, Donald Trump, your nation, and the world. So it's, it's going to be like when he pours out his blessings ho, on Trump and on the nation and the world, we're all going to get showered. You know, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Okay, when it rains, huh? It rains on everybody. <laughs> yes. So he's saying, yes. what I'm doing through this man and to this man, it's going to pour out on everybody. Mm, amen. That is good. And you a see? lot of people, Donna, just to clarify, when we talk about God using Trump or, or that blessings will come, we're not saying that it's, it's, oh, Trump is some, you know, God. Like, because a lot of people will say that, oh, you know, they – you're worshiping him and you think it's, a, and it's like, no, I'm not. I understand that God uses people right. and that he's using him and he's, he uses his church and right. he shows the world his love and his goodness through people. And it's, it's like saying the same thing. Oh, well you worship your pastor. Cause you know, you, you believe the words he speaks or whatever. It's like, no, we're not worshiping. We believe that God has an assignment on his life. Right. Um, to for a for a, a rescue plan yeah. to bring more people to Christ. You right. know, he's using he's already used him for that many, yeah. many times already. I mean, it's like he can use anyone. So right. I just want to clarify, touch on that. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's so important. Uh, if you think about Moses, how God we can all see that God called Moses. Yes. Oh, to save the nation of Israel from slavery they were in Egypt. And he had murdered somebody. I mean, he was a murderer. Yes. Okay. And God used him. God used yep. him. Okay. He was an imperfect man. And he, it sounds like he had a temper. And it was also a, like, not, didn't have too much confidence. Says he didn't speak good. He wanted his, bro, his brother Aaron to speak for him. You know, he, yes. he was, you know, he was human. But God right. chose him. God put his finger on him and said, I need you to do this. For me, I need yes. you to do this, and yes. this is what it is. But God, I mean, we all look at Trump and like you picked him, God. <laughs> Sometimes he's fresh, <laughs> and God's like, Yeah, I picked him. My hands on him. I need him to do this work. Yes, whatever for whatever reason, we'll probably find out when we get to heaven why God picks certain people to do certain things. But if yeah. we don't worship the person, but like Aaron and her, when there was a battle raging, his. Moses, when he had his arms up in the air, they were winning the battle. But when he got tired, he mm -hmm. sat on a rock, he put his arms down, they would lose the battle. So Aaron and her come, one on each arm, and hold his arms up. And as they're holding his arms up, they're winning the battle. And that's a picture of what God's saying. I choose weak people to do great things through, so I get the glory for it. But I want you to come alongside them, 
hold their arms up so the battle, the good thing that I want to do can get done. And so our job is to pray for him, to intercede for him, stand in the gap for him and his family and his loved yes. ones. It was, well, there was one time, I'll share this, that this was maybe about a year or so ago. Oh, ha. And I was, we were interceding and praying for Donald Trump. And all of a sudden I could feel such a hurt in my heart. And I knew that God was showing me this was the pain that was in Donald Trump's heart. He was mm -hmm. so worried about his family that they would be assassinated or killed. Mm -hmm. I, it, I'm telling you, it was, I was like, oh my goodness, my heart hurt so bad. God was showing me what Trump was feeling. And so I led the whole congregation. We prayed and we prayed and we prayed for the protection of his family, but we prayed yes. for his heart. Because I knew he was in a battle. Do I continue to pursue this that God's called me to do or quit so that my family will be safe? Oh, so we prayed for hours for him. And then the, then it, it lifted off. I was, the pain was gone and I knew he was okay. But so as an intercessor, you don't worship him. We're standing beside him holding his arms up saying, right. I wouldn't want to do this, but I'll help you. <laughs> yes. And as an intercessor, you you pray until that burden or that feeling lifts, right? You don't yes. just do one prayer. You continue to pray until you feel it lift yes. off. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, when, that's great. So those, those are sovereign things that happen to people that are praying many times. Yes. That you get a, a feeling in you that you know this, this, and that's going to happen. You pray until it's because God's showing you that. So you'll pray it to stop for whatever it is. So I, good, Donna. I'll give you another example. There was a time when I was first saved and I started seeing visions and stuff. And I was cooking dinner and, and I see this airplane and a vision flying and another airplane coming this way. And they're, they're, they're going to hit head on. And, and I, so I stopped cooking and I started praying and praying yeah. for these yeah. two planes that they would not collide. Mm -hmm. And so I did that until I felt, okay, it's okay. Oh, then later on turned on the news and they, I saw the exact thing <gasps> on the news. Two planes almost collided. They do not know how they missed one another and they met and they did. So that God will sometimes show us things, wow. not because this is going to happen. He's saying, I'm showing you this, pray that it doesn't happen. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Yes. And he'll give so us a speak like a burden for that. Oh, so mm -hmm. that we pray to stop it. All right. Okay. That answer your question? Yes. Good. Okay. All right. Oh, I'll finish this up. Who? Fear, terror, and tyranny will be chased out of your land and others. Such an avalanche of my goodness and my glory will be poured forth that there will be no room for evil. It will have to flee. Okay. So God's saying, I'm going to pour my glory out. Like I said, that, that, that wonderful vision that the prophet had of this ball of fire coming to the yes. earth. God's going to pour his glory out and it's going to chase all wickedness and evil away. Oh, uh, those that the evil one used to implement their wicked schemes will flee as well. They will run and try to hide, but no one can hide from my all seeing eyes exposed for all to see and brought to justice will be the fruit they reap. No one will escape justice. Justice. Praise is the Lord. He Praise says the that Lord. So many times. Oh, <laughs> I saw him once as the just judge of all the earth come down to the earth and stand on the earth with his gavel. And he say, I'm bringing justice to the earth. Ooh. Oh, powerful. Yes, exonerated Lord. and set free. This is such an encouraging word for the January Sixers, okay? And exonerated and set free will be those be who bore the stripes of injustice. You have prayed for my resurrection power to fall on your land, and now is the time you will see it come to pass. I will raise up the poor and destitute and restore the infirm and imprisoned. Oh, oh thank you, Lord. I know, I know. Discouragement will be sent far from our children to the camp of the enemy. So the discouragement that's been on us 
is being chased from us into the camp of the enemy. And aren't we seeing that happen now with the Democrats? Yes. Yes. We're not discouraged. They're getting who? Oh, they will reap what they tried to sow into the lives of the innocent and the just. Mm -hmm. And, he, and then he, uh, on July 18th, he continued to speak to me about this. He said, sing songs of deliverance like Miriam. When they crossed the Red Sea, Moses' sister led the whole nation dancing and rejoicing. And he said, I want you to sing songs of deliverance like Miriam did. Rejoice for victory is assured. Okay. Victory isn't like, well, we might have victory. God's saying <laughs> victory is assured. It's coming, okay? Yes. This explosion of victory will manifest personally, in your lives personally, nationally, in our nation, and globally all over the world. Wow. Wow. Is that awesome? We've been looking forward to it. Yeah, we've been needing it, huh? Yeah. So have we got a few more minutes or what do you tell me what? Oh. No, go ahead. Okay. All right. This was... this. Then as he's talking to me, I see myself walking in the spirit and this cool breeze is just blowing all over me. I'm walking with Jesus and I feel this breeze come all over me. And he said, I mean, I'm, I'm like, why am I feeling this? He said, I'm going to breathe upon this world. My breath will blow away the chaff or whatever is useless, corrupt and unprofitable off my children's lives. And at the same time, refresh and strengthen the weary and oppressed. He says, I'm going to breathe. Okay. Many like Donald Trump have grown weary during this battle for the soul of your nation, but mm -hmm. I will refresh them. So we're in a time now where we're going to see great victory, but also God says, I'm going to breathe my breath on you and refresh you, strengthen you. Okay. Yes. Oh, invigorated by my breath. They will lead the charge to take the hill or take back all that was stolen in years past. And so, you know how when we're coming to the end of a war, they say they, they, we have to take the hill, take that hill. Well, mm -hmm. God's saying, we're taking a hill right now. We're taking the nation back from the enemy and giving it back to Jesus, giving it back to God. Yes. All right. Yes. <laughs> but he's saying also in our own personal lives, we've lost things. A lot of people lost a lot of they lost their health, they lost finances, they lost a lot of things, lost jobs, lost yep. loved ones. And God yes. said, this is going to be a time of restoration. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Liberty, justice, and prosperity will be returned. Liberty, justice, and prosperity are going to be returned. You know, what? we're watching this starting to happen. So, you know, I, I just feel faith arising like, yes. Yes, yeah, same. I, I can believe this. <laughs> huh? Yes. I know it was hard to, it's hard to believe when you see the opposite, but you still believe God anyways. You're like, no, yeah. I still believe you, even though I see the opposite in the natural, because I don't look at the natural, you know, like I look into the spiritual God, what you're showing me, but now you're starting to see. And I think that's, I don't know, some, we all love when God starts to move and it's, yeah. we see it in the earth and we see God move in our lives and we see the miracles he performs in our lives. I mean, it, it just does. It it strengthens our faith again. And then yeah. we can look back and say, remember when God did this at the last minute? And like, he yeah. has been so faithful, but we're human. You know, we go through things and we have to encourage ourselves in the Lord. But yeah. now that we're starting to see all of this, it's, it's very exciting. And yeah. all you can do is praise God because you know that he's working. Absolutely. I, I'm feeling that faith is being really... Uh, built in people right now that are watching that faith is coming up higher and higher in them. So I'm just going to pray real. I know I'll go on with this, but I just want to pray right now. Cause I feel like there's an igniting of faith in us to receive, yes. you know, what Jesus said to the blind man, receive what you believe. Okay. Yep. And he, and he believed his eyes would be opened. And so he was able to see, and he's, I feel like that's where we're at right at this moment. So father, I pray that you see the faith 
in every single one right now that's asking for liberty, justice, prosperity in their lives, that's asking for healing, Lord God, yeah. that's asking for their loved ones to be safe, Lord God. We are watching you do wonderful miracles. We know how mighty and powerful you are, how faithful you are. Oh, so we're asking right now, please do miracles. Oh, I release miracles. Oh, ha, to pour forth on all your children like rain right now from heaven. Let miracles fall. Let body parts, people that need new body parts, let them come forth. Oh, let there be restoration in families. Let finances, oh, Ha, explode and grow. Let debts be canceled, Lord God. Let jobs come in, Lord God. Let homes be sold that need to be sold. Everything that needs to happen for your children. I'm asking, do miracles right now, Father, because their faith is alive. <laughs> they trust you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. I'll just go on real quick. <laughs> he said, all the inalienable rights that I gave my children will be given back to them. Joy will return to your land. And what I was preaching about this Sunday night and I saw the map of the United States and there was a sad face on it. You know how the. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's how we've been in the spirit with a big sad face. And then it turned to a happy face. <laughs> and you're like, yes. <laughs> he said, Joy will return to your land. As Miriam led the people to celebrate their freedom and their rights restored. My chosen worshipers will lead the masses to worship and celebrate like no other time in the history of the world. Because the warfare and oppression has been so intense, the celebration will be magnanimous. Oh, yes. Yes, it be. will be. Yes. Oh, <laughs> he said the faithful will be rewarded. Fruitful will their lives be. So happy will they be. They won't even remember the deep sorrow that they endured before I breathed upon them. Wow. So he's saying, I'm going to breathe. I'm going to, when I breathe, it's going to chase away the chaff, the things that are worthless that aren't any good in our lives. Oh, and, and off the wicked too. And he said, but I'm going to breathe life. In, I'm going to bring, breathe joy, restoration. Oh, you're going to be fruitful and you won't even remember the sorrow that you were suffering. It's that so much joy is going to come into your lives. So much fulfillment. That's what it's we're coming so, into. It's so encouraging. It's so, so encouraging. And you always are encouraging. You always come on with encouraging words from the Lord because he shows you the future and the good things that are coming yeah. and that his, his glory and the presence and the, the fire and all of the things that have sustained us because without that these past you know years there is no way you know any of us could be encouraged without the holy spirit you know really doing it within us there it's impossible but now to see all of this and rejoice together and it's just it's so wonderful and i'm excited i know you're excited everyone behind the scenes when we first came on we were talking we're all like oh my gosh what's gonna happen next and yeah. we're just we're all excited for what god's doing and i know you prayed um, for us and for our faith to rise, but I just, I want you to pray one more time All right. because it's, I love when you pray, but I also just want you to pray one more time. And just, if you have anything, you want to release anything, if you're seeing anything, I know you're a seer, um, just pray into that, release that. Um, and then we'll kind of talk about your, you have some events coming up and all that good stuff. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, I'm going to share something that that happened. Um, this happened a week ago on our, one of our, our Sunday night service. I was preaching this message about Trump and, and it was right after the assassination attempt and everything. And we were just the whole night was like a patriotic night. And unbeknownst to me, uh, this uh, woman came to the service and uh, her friend brought her and her husband drove them there. And she was from Iran and she did not believe in Jesus. She had no faith in Jesus whatsoever. Now I, I was clueless. I didn't, I did not preach a salvation message, nothing. So while I'm speaking afterwards, she told me this while I was speaking, Jesus visited her in the church and she had an encounter with him. She was wow. weeping. She could oh barely speak English <laughs> and she was weeping. She said, I believe from here. 
in Jesus. And she got baptized in the Holy Spirit, was praying in tongues. Oh she, my gosh, Donna. I, the glory, I'm just telling you, in his presence, nobody prayed for her. Jesus yeah. went and visited her. So I'm going to pray that for all of our unsafe loved ones. Yes, yes. Okay? Now, her husband was standing there. You know, he was saved. And he was standing there like, and I knew God was showing me he's upset because he thinks his wife is going to be way ahead of him spiritually now. And he's not going to catch up to her. So I said, can I pray for you? Because I felt God was showing me that. I said, I'm going to pray for you. And I baptized him in the Holy Spirit again. I prayed for the baptism and more gifts to pour out on him and everything. Wow. He said, she's going to go. And so he said what just what the Lord had showed me. She's Wait. going to be far ahead of me. I said, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> gonna be, you're going to be equally yoked. Okay. Aww. So I'm going to pray that too. Aww. For an equal yoking, this many that are watching that your loved ones well, they believe in Jesus, but they're not on fire for God. Oh, I'm feeling this. Okay. So yes. Father, now let your faith arise. Okay. You receive what you believe. So Father, I release right now, great passion for you, great love for you, encounters with you, Jesus. Oh, to all of our unsaved loved ones, for those that are backslidden. Oh, for those that are lukewarm. Oh, oh, for our loved ones that are not serving you. And on fire for you, I release your fire from heaven to fall on them. I release your glory. Let your glory fall now in the name of Jesus. Mm, thank you. On all of our loved ones, on those that are lukewarm and tepid, but on those that are lost. Oh, ha, I release your glory, Lord God. Lord, you're no respecter of persons. What you did for that couple at church last week, Lord God. Oh, the, the wonderful salvation. Oh, oh, and the fire that fell on that woman, Lord God, and on her husband. I release it now in the name of Jesus to fall on all of our loved ones. Yes, yes. In the name of Jesus. And mm -hmm. Father, you told me that as you release my glory, I want you to release healing. And just as my glory falls on my children, healing's going to fall too. So in obedience to the Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I release your glory, ho, oh, oh, ho, on every single one, ho, oh, on their loved ones, on their homes, and I release healing. I release health, ho, oh, ah. Now, in the name of Jesus, receive healing. Shoulders that are aching and sore, I command those shoulders to be healed now in the name of Jesus. People with arthritis and a lot of pain receive healing in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh. I command blind eyes, spiritually blind eyes to be open, but also eyes tap their eyesight restored in the name of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I also saw Donna when you were praying someone's like their your middle back is really sore right in between like your shoulder blades i see that the lord's healing that right now for you um and so father we thank you for that we ask that their back would be completely healed lord and all pain would go in jesus mighty name amen wow donna amen we I, just I, love I you I got to share this one thing when you said that I was praying with my friend, Anna, who lives off the grid in, in Alaska last week. And I didn't know it. She didn't tell me, but her neck was out. She was in terrible pain and pain all the way down her arm. Oh, and wow. just we were praying for our kids and for Donald Trump. God, yeah, yeah. She went, Wait a minute. Oh, oh, she said, my neck snapped in and the pain, all the pain is gone. So father, I'm going to release Lord. that. Father, I'm releasing right now, sudden, miraculous healings to happen in your glory. Oh, ha, ha. as your glory rests upon your children right now, I command spines to get in alignment, nerves to be unpinched, oh, and healing to flow to every arm, leg in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. Donna, so good. And if, if you've been just healed right now or you're feeling the glory or you have a testimony you want to share, please send us your testimony. I love to read these, Donna. They're so encouraging when they come to my inbox. I'm like, oh, God, you're working. You're moving. It's just, it's amazing. So go to ElijahStreams.com slash testimonials and share with us what God 
is doing for you right now. Um, I love to read them. They're, they're amazing. God is always moving. The Holy Spirit, he's still the miracle worker. So um, Donna, before we end today, I want you to share. I know you're going to, you have a couple um, uh, conferences coming up. And then I also wanted to share some books that you offer too. Oh, so right, right. whichever want, order you want to go in. I want to just say one last thing. Okay. God's on a roll. Yes. God is on a roll. It's as I keep hearing that, that God is moving mightily. He's on a roll. He's on a roll to bring victory. He's on a roll to bring healing. He's on a, a roll to bring joy, prosperity, blessings to his children. God's on a roll. <laughs> Yes. It's like amen. no stopping God when God's on a roll. There's no stopping him. <laughs> yes. Amen. Okay. I just had to share that. <laughs> Build I love it. Me. Yes. Yes. Yeah. When you hear something, you're like, okay, I keep hearing this. <laughs> Let me share it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what, what, tell me, uh, I have uh, an event coming up soon and this is in Waldorf, um, Minnesota. Oh, That's okay. The back to Minnesota again. Um, God's doing wonderful things in Minnesota. The, the last event we did in Minnesota, maybe a month or so ago, um, I saw the Ark of the Covenant being brought in with the army of God behind it. And I knew God was showing me that this, he was bringing his glory and he was starting in Minnesota and it was going to wow. explode throughout the entire nation. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> and, then, so, and then he sent you back again. That's yeah. That's yes, wonderful. and now I'm going again, and I think it's uh, October back to Minnesota. So God is going to, and then I was reading just recently that Minnesota looks like it's going to turn from a blue state to a red state. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, yeah, so we're just going to keep Minnesota in prayer. But anyway, so I'm going to be at the Glory Bond with, and Deborah, who has Midnight Cry with Deborah, is going to be there preaching too. And that's August 10th and 11th. All right? So anybody that cool. wants to... Go get filled with the glory. Go to that. We're going to really pray for healing and miracles for people too. And then I also have the cruise. The Caribbean cruise is November 3rd through the 9th. Okay. So I think there might be still some openings for you to click on the link. Go Just go to DonnaRigney.org. Go to the events page and you can click on this and you can, it'll bring you to uh, the, the different events. And right. then I, I know we have a couple of your books too, which people yeah. can go to same donnarigney.org to get your books right. and your teaching because yeah. you have soaking CD sets, which yeah. I'm sure are amazing. Yeah. I, I teach all about the glory and how to soak and marinate in the glory. And so many people have been ordering these and, and writing back to me and letting me know that God is really changing their lives with this. And the same with the books. I, I've been getting so many people. One person sent me a, a testimony yesterday how she had read how in the book Divine Encounters I had seen in the spirit people with metal clamps around their head and chains hanging off them walking through the city streets. And her uh, husband had been suffering from terrible headaches or her brother, I've forgotten, but he, and uh, he was a veteran. And so she read that and read it to him and read it to his mother her mother, and they laid hands on him, and he got mm. completely healed. Praise God. And he hasn't had a headache in two months, and he had constant headaches. Well, so God's just using these. He speaks to us. We share what he says. It's his word, and he yes. ignites it, and people are just getting changed. So that, that was from the book Divine Encounters uh, and also The Glory of God Revealed, both are prophetic books. Wow. That's awesome, Donna. I, I just love you so much. I'm so thankful you came on and shared your beautiful encounters with the Lord, encouraged us. I can't wait to see the times that are coming. And I know hopefully next time I'll get to be back on with you, catch up and say, remember last time we were yeah. saying God is doing this? And, you know, because once you start talking about what God's doing and you know, you look at his faithfulness, it's kind of hard to stop because you can go back time and time again and just see all the good things that he's done in each and every one of our lives. So thank you for joining us today, Donna. We love you. Thank you. Do not want to miss tomorrow. I'm going to be on with Kat Kerr. She's going to be talking about, of course, any updates the Lord has given her, shown her, and then also answering some questions about heaven. So you don't want to miss tomorrow. We love you so much. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.
Bye-bye. Thank you.